All right, so we have a brand new interview with the developers of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, where they talk about the iconic character of Gilgamesh being included in VII Rebirth, how Sephiroth is going to be the center of the story for Rebirth, and their progress on Remake Part 3. So if any of that sounds cool to you, feel free to click the like button, and if you're new here and you'd like to stick around, you can subscribe. It is always appreciated. So the original interview comes to us from Famitsu, which is being translated by Audrey. So I'll leave a link to both the original article as well as Audrey's Twitter profile in the description below if you guys would like to check those out. But for the purposes of this interview, they sat down with Tetsuya Nomura, Naoki Hamaguchi, and Yoshinori Katase to talk about all things Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. And we're currently in a whirlwind of press for VII Rebirth. The state of play just took place. And if you guys would like to check out my reaction as well as my breakdown slash analysis of that state of play, I'll leave a link to that video in the description as well as this video as well if you guys would like to check it out. The demo is currently out. And of course, there are tons of previews dropping from different outlets and different streamers that got to attend the launch event that took place back in January. So it's a flood of information. A lot of it we already knew, but thankfully the stuff from Famitsu is brand new and it's cool stuff that we can talk about. So starting off first with the progress for Remake Part 3. Nomura mentions in the latest Famitsu interview that the first draft of the main scenario for Part 3 is complete, but there is still much to be done. Katase says Nojima submitted a complete outline that they will follow, and it is up to Hamaguchi and the team to make the vision a reality. He and Nomura are there to supervise and provide ideas. Hamaguchi mentions for him personally, he prefers it if the story part of 7 Remake Project is handled by those who worked on the original game, meaning Katase, Nomura, and Nojima. His job is just to ensure that they're able to deliver the best gaming experience with the utmost quality for the current generation of gamers. So this is super cool. At first glance, you might think, oh, they're starting work on Remake Part 3, which is super massive. So they do have that outline from Nojima that pretty much has probably all of the important story points fleshed out. So that way there's a little bit of structure there that they can pull from and kind of figure out how to take the story in the right direction. But I think the bigger thing here is that this seemingly confirms that Naoki Hamaguchi will also be the main director for Remake Part 3, which says a lot of things. First off, it shows that Square Enix and the entire team behind 7 Remake Project are very confident in what Hamaguchi and his team have delivered with Rebirth. And seemingly based on a lot of the previews that have come out, a lot of people are really impressed with 7 Remake Rebirth so far, and just following Naoki Hamaguchi through different interviews and just kind of learning more about him, I'm really enamored and impressed with his just philosophy on gaming. He seems to have his finger on the pulse. He really knows what's current, what's fun, and what makes a game feel worthwhile. He's very young, and I think he's super connected on how to make games great, which is not an easy thing to do. So clearly they're super impressed with what he and his team delivered for Rebirth, so much so that they're handing him Remake Part 3 which is super, super massive. And that says a lot of really great things about Rebirth. And to that last point right there, it seems like they have a really good workflow going over on at Square Enix. And a couple of weeks ago, we did a story from Game Informer that covered the really chaotic development of the original Final Fantasy VII and how things got so chaotic that it changed how they developed games going forward. And seemingly, they created some sort of system of structure that allowed them to create these games in a timely manner with less of a headache. And I'm kind of wondering if this exact setup is something that was crafted so long ago where you have specific people you know crafting the story and creating the outline and then another team comes in to just kind of bring that to life it'd be very interesting to see if that's something that developed because of the original ff7 and it still lives on today so either way they know what they're doing they found a way to streamline the development process for these games and it sounds like everything is proceeding as planned up next famitsu asks the team why is gilgamesh in Final Fantasy VII, <laughs> which is a very aggressive question, but it's also kind of funny. Hamaguchi answers that if you take on the Ancient Master's quest, it'll take you to various locations where you'll need to explore and collect things in order to proceed with the story. As you clear the missions in these areas, some characters that await you include Gilgamesh, among others as well. He says you should play for yourself to find out. So this is really interesting. So Gilgamesh was not in the original FF7. I think my first 
interaction with Gilgamesh may have been Final Fantasy VIII because I got into Final Fantasy around seven and then I played eight and there's that really iconic scene where you're fighting Cypher and this might be a bit of a spoiler so just a heads up for Final Fantasy VIII but you're fighting Cypher in what's going to be your final encounter with him and Odin shows up to help you but to the surprise of the party Cypher finds a way to counter Odin and defeats him and then towards the end of that battle a new summon shows up to aid you in battle and it ends up being Gilgamesh which was my first exposure to the character so him not being in the original but now being in Rebirth is super cool and it doesn't sound like he's there just to be put into the game it sounds like there's an actual narrative and gameplay focus for him to be in there because you're going to these areas you're meeting him progressing through maybe getting some really cool rewards that requires a character like Gilgamesh to show up but they also tease other characters so I'm really curious to see what other iconic characters whether they be allies summons or even enemies from games that were pre FF7 potentially showing up in Rebirth. And last but not least, we have talk about Sephiroth and how he's going to be the center of the story for Rebirth. Katase says FF7 Rebirth story is centered around Sephiroth since you start off the game learning more about him during Cloud's flashbacks. He also mentions that the story of course continues on to part 3, so it was important to end on a note that left the audience wanting far more. He hopes fans will discuss the story and gameplay in the meantime while waiting for part 3. Katase says Remake's ending was different than the original, and it was nice to see everyone's theories on it. However, as a creator, he would hate for people to be able to guess what happens next, so they hope you can keep the hype up until the end. Sephiroth is even more involved than I remember him being in even something like Crisis Core, and getting to learn more about this character and fleshing him out, again, that's a very fine line you have to kind of straddle. You don't want to explain too much, but you don't want to leave out important info that's going to help the audience really kind of, maybe not necessarily endear themselves to Sephiroth, but become more enamored in and want to learn more about him so that way when he does show up it's really exciting and having played the rebirth demo that is 100 percent accurate um the, the demo is basically chapter one of the game and there's so much more emphasis on sephiroth and it's crazy because they took a story that we all knew really well the nibelheim incident and they found a way to make it not only feel fresh again but feel more impactful. There's so much more detail in the Nibelheim flashback with Cloud, Sephiroth with Tifa. It's like they took an old painting and they cleaned it up and added all of this brand new fine detail to it. That is Sephiroth in Rebirth so far. There's new dialogue with him, there's more emotion, he shows more of his personality, but when that switch flips, and he goes psycho, there is so much more brutality to him as a character. I didn't think it was possible, but they made Sephiroth scary again, and they made him so much more brutal. Uh, in just chapter one of Rebirth, that scene where the town burns down, Sephiroth just going through nonchalantly stabbing people and making sure they're dead, he is insanely brutal and obviously Sephiroth has a really big plan in store for Rebirth. We still don't know what that is but he's planning something massive and I've speculated as well as other people that he is <laughs> basically time traveling. He's I think Maximilian dude even said he's like Biff Tannen from Back to the Future Part 2 so Sephiroth is finding different ways to travel between different timelines which we saw in the most recent trailer. He was there with Zack at the church with Aerith which was pretty nuts so he's clearly got a very big plan and to see that unfold is going to be really exciting. Now what I am very curious about is how do you top the ending of 7 Remake? Because when I got to the end of 7 Remake, I did not expect to fight Sephiroth because it's the first part of a trilogy. I thought maybe we would fight a different Genova creature or maybe something different, but no, we fought Sephiroth and it was a really cool battle inside of the Singularity. So I'm wondering for Rebirth, how on earth do you top that? You're going to need another Sephiroth battle, I would assume. So how do you make it bigger? How do you make Sephiroth more threatening, more scary? And how do you make the gameplay overall and the entire boss battle feel bigger, grander, more impressive than what came before? So that's going to be a really interesting challenge. And then, of course, what happens after you beat him the second time in Rebirth? So there's got to be a very big story hook that gets people going, oh my god, what did they just do? <laughs> I can't wait to see what happens 
happens in Remake Part 3. You gotta have a good cliffhanger. And myself and many other people have kind of referred to this trilogy, you know, in the standard trilogy format. I think Star Wars does it the best. That's the best example to use where Remake was Part 4, A New Hope. You introduce these characters. Rebirth is like the Empire Strikes Back where it's kind of like the down notes in the trilogy where the heroes are beaten down. It's left on a big cliffhanger. And then Part 3, Return of the Jedi is where things start to uh, look up for our heroes and they start to make some progress into beating the bad guy. So with that being said, that is the video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below about these comments in particular. And is there any character from previous Final Fantasies before seven that you would like to see show up in Rebirth, much like Gilgamesh? I will see you guys in the next video. Please remember to always be excellent to one another.